neuronal cell bodies responsible for the sympathetic outflow are located in the anterior intermediolateral cell column, which spans the entire transurine and the upper lumbar areas of the body's spinal cord. These sympathetic sympathetic preganglionic neurons, SPNs, send cholinergic projections that control the norepinephrenergic postganglionic neurons within the sympathetic ganglia. For that reason, they control the flow of sympathetic outflow to visceral targets, including the lymphoid organs, see above. Over 89 of spinal cord injuries, SCI, affect the cervical and thoracic regions, and therefore putting the flow in question, however. No clinical trials have been conducted to investigate the effect of different sympathetic nerve activities on the immune system in the acute period after SCI. Sympathetic nervous system, SBN, activation through acute trauma can cause the secretion of norepinephrine, NE. Second, a buildup of norepinephrine within one hour of spinal cord trauma sets in. A scarcity of data is obtained concerning the immune response of spinal cord patients in the acute phase of spinal cord injury, but researchers have observed that spinal damage leads to immunologic dysfunction. For instance, complete tetraplegics, injured above the level of sympathetic outflow tracts, have a smaller lymphocyte responsiveness and white blood cell function than do uninjured controls. Furthermore, Impaired lymphocyte proliferation also occurs in patients with tetraplegia, compared with controls. Additionally, the extent of immune dysfunction correlates with the degree of deafferentation of the sympathetic outflow, with more severe lesions leading to greater immune dysfunction. The possibility that damage of the sympathetic outflow to the lymphatic organs with SCI is behind the observed immune dysfunction in these sufferers, emphasis mine show that these observations may explain why injuries to sympathetic outflow are connected with diminished immune system activity. The sort of injury found in spinal cord injuries is believed to affect the sympathetic outflow to the lymphatic organs that appear to promote autoimmune dysfunction in these patients. Together, these findings point to the notion that damage of these sympathetic outflows due to SCI might have profound downregulatory effects on immune responses. The parenchyma of lymphatic organs contains some fibers that have sympathetic roots. And some of them create classic type synapses with lymphocytes. Lymphocytes also have the capability to process signals sent by the sympathetic system, notwithstanding the numerous types of lymphocytes. Merely all the lymphocyte teams possess beta-2 adrenergic receptors. One of the absolute most important tactics of the sympathetic system on immunity is to facilitate antibody production. The physiological research shows that norepinephrine, NE, is released in the lymphoid organs upon an antigenic challenge and the absence of which occurs decreases the number of antibody-secreting cells. Based on complementary studies, this enhancement of B-cell antibody production is likely to be limited to the initial growth stages after antigenic challenge. In vivo knee must be deployed in the spleen and bone marrow at the conclusion of the 8-hour range and prior to 25 hours if it is to have any effect. In vitro studies indicate that B-cells produce higher amounts of immunoglobulins in response to knee only when the norepinephrine is delivered during the first 12 hours of stimulating T-cells by administration of stem cells. Because a vaccination for spinal cord injuries was recently proposed and because the success of this vaccination hinges on the formation of antibody responses soon after SCI. A vaccine approach is regarded as a favorable and promising treatment for victims of SCI. We considered whether there was an association between changes in serotonin levels and antibody responses after SCI. The results of our data demonstrate underscore the drastic decrease in antibodies directed to antigens originating from the spinal subarachnoid space during the first week after SCI. Albino spray dolly rats weighing 180 to 200 grams, Charles River, were used for this purpose. They were housed in individual cages, maintained a 12-hour light-slash-dark cycle, 0700-1900, and given food pellets and water ad libitum. Animals were administered ketamine, 100 mg-slash-kg, xylazine, 5 mg-slash-kg, and acipromazine. 
0.75 mg slash kg, injected intraperitoneally, IP, prior to its implantation. A sterile 8.1 cm polyurethane catheter, tecariflexide 0.022, ID 0.014, Thermetics Polymer Products, Woburn MA, was filled with Ringer's solution, 6.5 liters, prior to its introduction. The caudal 2 cm was surgically implanted beneath the dorsal subarachnoid space so that its tip was placed between thoracic vertebrae 1 and 3, T1-3. The implantation procedure followed steps previously established, 16. Rats were given a single dose of gentamicin, 40 mg slash kg, SC, and then were allowed to be examined for a week. The rats were randomly divided into two groups. Impact brain tissue models were inflicted on an earlobe of the experimental rats at a rate of 25 mm 10 g using an NYU impactor. Rats who were suffering received a laminectomy, as well as an incision at T4. Rats were immediately injected with 150 g of sterile chicken ovalbumin, OVA, Sigma, St. Louis, Missouri, in lactated ringer's solution. 9 liters intravenously, at a constant rate. 0.5 liters per minute. Rats experiencing pain received surgery, and an opening was made on the T4 vertebrae. Rats were injected with 150 grams of sterile chicken ova, Sigma, St. Louis, Missouri, in lactated ringer's solution liters intravenously, at a constant infusion rate of 0.5 liters per minute. 2 to 3 times per day 7D post SCI. Bladders were expressed 3 to 4 times per 12 hour period. In instances following SCI, body weight was recorded prior to administration of OVA and danger of death. As soon as death occurred, India Inc. was inserted in catheterization tubes so as to ascertain if they could be adapted to inject antigens into a spinal subarachnoid space. Matthew, a survivor of cancer and stroke, requests that you help spread awareness of severe diseases by publishing this video. Please take a moment to subscribe to and like this video.